Uh, Nadine, thank you very much. Um, so I could start in so many places with my story, and I, I've been trying to think about, you know, how to ground this, remembering what it was like at the beginning. The story sounds really good now. It wasn't so good at the beginning. Um, so I was very lucky, having been a graduate in geography, which I really thought would never help me in anything. I um, was lucky enough to find a company that did geospatial data. And geospatial spatial data is kind of cool again now. Um, it's where I started and learnt my trade, and it became um, the basis of site location models. So that was CACI. Um, it was also the most terrifically entrepreneurial company. Um, it was an absolute meritocracy, which, you know, being a a young female. It wasn't easy back then. I, you know, it was, it was the days when men played footsie with you under the desk when you were at meetings. I mean, seriously, it was uncomfortable. And I learned to kind of deal with that. And I love my work. And as you heard, I met my husband there and he was a mathematician and computer scientist. And so very quickly, I learned that he was really good at all the things that I was really terrible at and I could focus on learning business and doing deals, and it became very, very exciting. So that's the story. What happened um, is also important. So, you know, at the beginning, when we left CACI and started Dunhumby, it wasn't pretty, and I'm going to tell you that story. Um, but the era was very, very important. So the business I'm in now is big data, and data sciences. I think it's the best business in the world. I love it. It's the same job, completely different approach that I've done for the last mm, more than 20 years, um, quite a lot more than 20 years. Um, but it's changed out of all recognition. When I started it, um, technology was massively expensive. People threw away customer data because it was too expensive to hold. And so back when I started, nobody kept it, nobody used it. And that's why it was exciting. And so technology kind of kept trend with the growth in data. Um, we sold Unhumby over five years ago now. Um, the new world, the new data is completely the opposite. Computing is really cheap. Um, there's open source um, software and tools, which is incredible. The overhead for setting up a data or analytics business is a fraction of the cost it ever was. But the bad news is that everybody's doing it. And the other bad news is everybody's got too much data now. So when you talk to people about data, they go, I don't want to hear because I've already got too much and I can't do anything with it. So there's always a pro and con about the time you start a business. Um, and it's absolutely never, ever easy. Um, I thought it would be easier second time round, and it isn't. So, um, OK, people talk to you more easily because of what you've done, but it's still hard. So I want to talk about that moment of starting, because, you know, the business that's been described, you know, became a global business. It was like a billion-dollar turnover company. Um, at the end of the day, 35 officers, 1,500, 2,000 people. It was a huge business. Um, but I never knew it would become that. So when we started it, um, why did we start it, first of all? Well, um, my husband, Clive, was then running the part of the business in CACI. Um, he wasn't American, and so in the end, they brought an American over to manage him, which was a little demotivating at the time. And they also started taking out the profits from the business, which meant it was really difficult to invest in the future, i.e. <coughs> customer data. And at that point, Clive said, I have to leave because this isn't going to be what I want it to be. And long story short, they tried to talk him out of it. And I said, don't you worry, you go, decide what you want to do, and I'll stay behind and pay the mortgage. Because we just bought a house and we were mortgaged up to the eyeballs. So then they fired me 10 minutes later. 
after they'd accepted his resignation, which was a bit of a shock. So we were both out of a job. We had a huge mortgage, and it was really, really tough, and we thought that was bad. And then we um, set up the business. We wrote a business plan. We won a client. We were super excited because it was going to pay the bills. And then the old company sued us because they said we'd won the client with unfair knowledge. And the reason I'm explaining this, because I'm no longer bitter and twisted about it, <laughs> I'm fine. But the reason I'm explaining it is because it really, really hurt. It hurt to be fired because I was fired because I was Clive's wife when we were going to compete. We didn't know that we were, but apparently we were. And secondly, we were sued, which meant that our house was on the line, our lives were on the line, and we couldn't earn our keep. And it was really, really terrifying. And the reason I explain it is because that's what happens when you start a business. Things go wrong, it looks really dark, and that's why you have to be with incredible people when you start a business. You have to have someone that you trust at your side, someone who's strong and brave and is going to be with you through all those very difficult moments. And um, when you find that magic, um, you can go through these very dark places and you can achieve amazing things. And for me, that's probably been the greatest pleasure in you know, what I've created. Um, I think people are sometimes more surprised that Clive and I are still married than actually that we created this business. Um, and I, I suppose that's why we, we, we didn't stay retired, because we thought it was a little bit too close and we needed a few more people around us to really spread out that, that kind of intensity on what we do. So we're back doing things that are exciting. We love data, we love data sciences. All the rules have changed. The technology's changed, the people have changed, the cult culture's changed. And so um, it's about adaptability. And I think adaptability is probably, um, along with focus, because actually I was smiling when Simon talked because um, when he asked me what I was doing at the moment, I said, well, Simon, I'm really busy, and I'm actually doing three different things at the moment. I'm slightly embarrassed about having said that now, and I'm going to go back and focus, because he is so, so right. I get distracted and excited, and I do other things, but focus is the answer. Surround yourself with fantastic people and work incredibly hard. Those are my tips. Thank you. Thank you very much, Edwin. In fact, we've got a couple of husband and wife partnerships. And uh, you've mentioned, obviously, the experience of being with Clive. I mean, how easy is it to separate the personal and, and the work-life balance out? And, and would you recommend it, going into partnership with your husband, if you could do your time over again? He might uh, be watching, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's not easy. It's absolutely not easy. I mean, on the plus side, you will never find someone you trust more. Mm. Um, on the negative side, you have to develop a few rules. I have two specifically, which is one, if you're going to talk about work at home, you have to ask the other person, is it OK if we talk work for a few <coughs> minutes? Because sometimes you want to and they don't want to. And the second one is never, ever share lifts on the way into work or back because that used to drive us crazy waiting for each other. We used to stand there like tapping on the floor, which is how long are you going to be? So in the end, it was separate cars home. Now, you mentioned big data that you love um, and it's, the rules have changed now. You've still got some companies, and especially smaller companies, that have very little data. And then the polar opposite, a huge amount of data. So how do you approach those two different polar opposites? I think there is a huge amount of data out there now. So even if you don't have a lot of data, there is an enormous amount of freely available data out there. You know, you can, you can buy data on um, house prices. Um, you can buy commuting data. You can buy census data, you can buy business census mm. data. So I think um, no one should be short 
of actually understanding how to assess their market, model their market. And, you know, people come out of university now with amazing skills. You know, they're born locked into their laptop with their open source software. And so I think for sort of fairly low investment, mm. you can have a young, brilliant mind who's probably going to steer you as well as mm. my grown-up children mm. now steer me with things that I find difficult. Um, they just know instinctively. Now, I know you're involved with all sorts of different advisory positions, just like Simon and chair of your life, and in particular, a big fan of maths and physics. So is that another great idea for the audience watching? If you're going to employ anybody, have someone with maths and physics skills, because you can't go far wrong. <coughs> but how about the creativity, though? Are we missing anything? So my experience of people with maths and physics is that they are beautiful, talented, on the whole, introverts who won't interrupt you when you're talking, which is really, really good. Um, but you do have to draw them out a bit. Um, but incredibly creative with data and numbers. So I think we have too few in this country. Um, we have too many people taking the arts and humanities. Um, girls um, who actually did phenomenally well in Dunhumby. We were... Five zero fifty per cent female mm. at Dunhumby, and they rose to the top of the organization, mm. which i 'm really, really proud of, so I think sciences, data science, big data it is you know a perfect domain for mm. women to shine that was my is timer. That, you, oh, oh, that was my timer sorry was guys. your husband saying where are you <laughs> yeah. i'm waiting team? to lift yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. um, just that. very briefly i mean you, you mentioned a time when you know business was hopefully very different mm -hmm. to what it is today i mean I, I was one of the first female football commentators 25 years ago awesome. which was a baptism of fire and it wasn't at the time <laughs> and i just went back into business to what i trained to do because i had very similar experience to how you're um talking about do you get a sense that the gender balance is easier today or does it matter if you're an entrepreneur because gender it doesn't matter you've got an idea you can just get on with the world should we be worried about these things that hold us back well you know I, one of the joyous things that I do now is talk about female role mm. models. So you're a brilliant female role model mm. and we need to encourage women to talk more about their successes. Women are a bit embarrassed about success and ambition. Mm. Um, young girls don't see it as attractive or feminine and I think we have to try and help with that. I have a project called The Female Lead, which is all about, you know, women like you talking about the fact that it's so much fun mm. to just be good mm. at what you do. And so, um, you know, is it harder? I think if, if you're the type of person who absolutely believes in what you're doing and loves it, it doesn't matter whether you're male or female. Mm. But, you know, I think, I think as women, um, it, it's useful to give other women a bit of encouragement and a mm. shove in the right direction, if at all possible. Because yeah, I know you've got a book hidden under here, The Female Lead, which <coughs> hasn't been published yet, but one lucky person tonight is going to win a copy of this. I think this is the only copy that you've got, but that's yeah. coming out in February. So, I mean, I'd imagine that's full of inspiring stories and, and the clues yes. in the title. Yes. The Female Lead, indeed. I think, was, was it... Um, Madeline, the former home, is it home secretary of the United States of America? Madeline there's Albright. A, yeah. Mad, Madeline Albright saying there's a special place in hell for women who don't help other women. Exactly. <laughs> and I think that's a great quote. And Leslie, we'll leave it on that. That's <laughs>